Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include European Union takes Germany to court over Deutsche Post state aid. Time to give the EU a miss. Wales could be better off as MEP Derek Vaughan lobbies for more money from the European Union. And EU tells UK and Spain to work on the Gibraltar dispute. Plus, rethinking education in Europe. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. We reported earlier this week the debacle of Deutsche Post and the ongoing case of illegal state aid that had dragged on for the last 12 years. Meanwhile, back in the UK, the British Postal Service has been carved up and sold off at basement prices. Another example of how corporate banksters are leveraging fundamental democratic structural failings of the EU to raid private wealth from member states. European Union state aid regulators took legal action against Germany on Wednesday for failing to recover millions of euros in state aid granted to Deutsche Post last year. Now, I also categorically stated that Deutsche Post had used this to gain unfair advantage in the market, and here is that admission on record. The European Commission, tasked with ensuring a level playing field in the 28-country bloc, said last year that the combination of high regulated prices and pension subsidies granted by Germany gave Deutsche Post an unfair advantage over rivals. So folks, when I said that we in Britain are being ripped off, what I really meant was we in Britain are being ripped off. Well, Malta is not a happy bunny. This week's meeting of the European Council has come and gone and carried with it the mountain of hype with which it was surrounded. The Prime Minister was said to be ready to stage a walkout if he was not satisfied with the conclusions, and the leader of the opposition came out within minutes of the summit's conclusions saying they had represented a regression because Malta was not even mentioned in them. Now this article goes into what EU accession has and has not brought for Malta and acts as a good barometer for what new accession states like Croatia should expect in reality. Noola Grimmer reports problems with immigration have not been improved by joining the EU. We did get all of that funding from the EU but much of it has been squandered on roads we did not really want. We have had funding for schools, which was a good thing, but some big producers swallowed up the funds for agriculture and the ordinary farmer got next to nothing, and even saw subsidies disappear. We have seen local councils receive EU funds for all sorts of glory ventures obtained by dint of rural funds, and we have a fully-fledged museum now in Gozo that had been created this way. Labour MEP Derek Vaughan has urged a top European boss to approve the reallocation of EU spending in the UK to benefit Wales. Mr Vaughan, former leader of Neathport Talbot Council, met with European Regional Policy Commissioner Johannes Hahn to ask that Wales receive £2.1 billion in structural funds between 2014 and 2020. During his meeting with Mr Hahn, Mr Vaughan emphasised the importance of EU funding to Wales and pointed out that Wales was viewed as one of the best regions for accurate spending of EU money. The Commissioner was very receptive to these proposals, he said. Well, I bet that makes the lovely people of Wales proud to have to send their man, cap in hand, to the Mr Bumble of Europe. Please, sir, can I have some more? Talk about polling the short straw. We are failing to even realise the potential of that Wales has to offer the UK. It's a first-class source of primary industry and materials, a people with world-class engineering skills and strong, robust communities. Gold, coal, stone, slate, water, energy and agriculture has all been given away in return for bureau handouts. I'm sorry, but this is wrong, totally wrong.
The European Union Friday refused to take sides in a smouldering border dispute between Spain and the United Kingdom over the British territory of Gibraltar, but urged the two sides to work together to ensure smooth flow of traffic there. Spain and the UK have been at loggerheads over Gibraltar since 1704, when British forces captured the territory, which has then ceded to Britain in a 1713 treaty. Now, the current dispute flared up over the summer after Gibraltar authorities, upset by Spanish fishing in its narrow band of territorial waters, dropped concrete blocks off the coast to create an artificial reef. In response, Spanish authorities tightened routine controls on the land border between Spain and Gibraltar, causing long delays and traffic jams at the crossing. Our research team have just released today's report in our legislation section, Rethinking Education. In it, the Council is urged to adopt promptly the anti-discrimination directive which is key to combating bias and guaranteeing genuine equality, including at school. Furthermore, member states are encouraged to improve open access to all educational and scientific materials with the aim of lowering costs for education and research, particularly in the light of recent budget cuts in these areas throughout the EU. Now, the report notes the importance of mutual recognition of qualifications gained during studies abroad, with particular reference to the Erasmus scheme. And furthermore, the report urges member states to include VET in the education system and to ensure its quality, in particular through the introduction of entrepreneurial and ICT training. STEM subjects, that's science, technology, engineering and mathematics, need to be made more appealing for young people, and there needs to be much more focus on traversing skills, language skills and entrepreneurial skills in order to achieve a greater level of EU-wide employability. Now, this is encouraging. The very fact that the EU has focus on STEM shows that it realises that this notion of a service-only economy has failed. It's vital that we get back to basics when it comes to economic infrastructure. Primary, secondary and tertiary industries need to be balanced. That means still more needs to be done. Now, the Euro Bureau is a mammoth sloth when it comes to shifting legislation. And as I pointed out earlier, we have the whole of Wales waiting in the wings to bring its primary in industries on stream. The East Midlands and the North East have first-class engineers begging to be given something to work on. And let's not forget the digital technologies, the Jet Experimental Fusion Reactor in Cambridge, genetics, science... And biotech in the southwest. We are the founder of the computer industry. Acorn, who built the BBC computer and now responsible for the ARM computer that sits in almost every mobile phone on the planet. Bristol Space Planes, designers of the Ascender space plane, capable of delivering satellite payloads to orbit from conventional airfields, but not commercially built. And why? Because our Euro politicians and our own Westminster politicians are too busy playing EU tiddlywinks. Oh, come on, people. We can do this. Britain could so easily be number one in the world without hardly even breaking into a sweat. Today in our video library, I just want to give you some idea of the potential that we have here in the UK. And we all know that energy is a key resource. Fossil fuels are running out, so globally there is a rapidly growing need for new sources of energy. Now don't listen to the current politicians banging on about gas fracking from shale. It's nonsense. It's expensive and it pollutes your groundwater. Why do our politicians talk as though shale gas for the UK is the yellow brick road? Well, because they're being lobbied and manipulated. And furthermore, they're forgetting to ask one fundamental question. Where is the evidence? We can all be guilty of just accepting information by rote without asking where is the evidence that supports the statement. So what's happening in the new energy sciences and getting very little media current coverage? Well, the UK is at the forefront of the development of fusion reactors that generate energy from seawater. Well, don't just accept my word for it. Listen to this British physicist, Stephen Cowley, presenting at TED Talk to an audience in Oxford. Ladies and gentlemen, we are world class. 
We have and can lead the world, but we are being suffocated by the very politicians that are meant to lead us. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.